All right, I'm going to bring up a Mr. Mike Caldwell. Um, I can tell we're going to do a lot of great verbo. Or, um, we don't want to know what you're going to do together. We do. We're going to do some verbal judo, I can tell you. <laughs> and so, winning clients, making sales, the power of empathetic marketing. When I spoke to this gentleman, and I've been around marketing a long time, I've been around marketing my businesses a long time, and that, that, came, that bounced off of me. Empathetic marketing. You know the difference between empathy and compassion? Compassion is, wow, you know, you have a disease, that must be horrible. <laughs> Empathy is, I had it. So you're coming from a space of internalizing what they're going through because you were there. They're both valid, they're both good, but when you apply it to marketing, this light bulb went off. Because you're understanding where they're at, right? And I'll let him explain, but we've had some great conversations. So Mike Caldwell, known as the marketing medic, Combines 12 years of paramedic experience. Always good to have you here for that reason. <laughs> and his, Especially at your age. And, and, his, <laughs> and his innovative marketing strategies that created a unique approach called empathetic marketing. They met that he, he then met a man named Jim Lutz, who was the only guy that could out-talk him. And they <laughs> I'm going to paraphrase some of this for you. The author of the number one uh, Amazon best-selling book, Empathetic Marketing. He saved businesses and aided entrepreneurs and coaches to achieve remarkable success. Mike's philosophy focuses on authentic connections, improving customer retention, and driving growth in any economy. How many people here are entrepreneurs? 75%. Listen cool. to this guy. Thanks, bro. All right. Thank you. Can't wait to hear it. Can't wait to hear what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so far today, we've heard mostly like motion of it, motion, mo motivational stuff, a lot of right brain, a lot of creative. But for you, Steve, we're going to be moving more to the left side. We're going to be a lot more linear, okay? Listen, everybody's pulling me over to this like feeling my feelings thing. <laughs> Good with it. Yeah, we're going to explore a few feelings, but uh, yeah, there's definitely been a lot of challenges. Oh my gosh, the challenges that you folks have overcome so far. You're probably, oh, what challenges have you overcome? Well, I live off the grid with five rescue dogs, three horses, two pygmy goats, and a cat. So my biggest challenge <laughs> every day is cleaning up poop. <laughs> I have so much poop to clean up. But so that's, that's my biggest challenge. But what I want to talk about today is I'm all for that, uh, that right side brain stuff and the creativity. My first book is called Veer Toward Success, where you use your vision, energy, attitude, and resolve to achieve pretty much any, any uh, dream that you have. But today we're going to get a lot more left-sided, and I'm going to give you like tangible tools that you can take away. Okay? So show of hands, who wants to 2x to 4x their business by the end of this call? Okay? So this isn't a rhetorical question. I don't want to give you the knowledge of how to do it. I want to give you the tools of how to do it. So it'll do most of the heavy lifting for you. Okay? So uh, this slide is going to uh, show up again at the end. And I'm going to ask you if I fulfilled on my promise. Okay? Because I'm, I'm serious about this. But let's just back up a little bit to where the whole empathy and the empath empathic marketing came from. So in the 1990s, I worked as a paramedic. And in my last job, I was a helicopter paramedic. So what that meant is I'd get up in the morning, I'd put on my costume, I'd fly through the sky, I'd land on the ground, I'd save somebody's life, and I would fly away. What is that the definition of? Superman. It's a superhero, right? <laughs> that was a freaking superhero. So it was a really cool job, and I, and I really enjoyed that part of the job. But the problem was I was uh, the supervisor for the base, which meant I had politics. So many politics, a lot of administration. I had to deal with my employer. I had to deal with my base hospital. I had to deal with eight freaking medics who had egos out to here because we were helicopter paramedics. We were the best of the best, right? <laughs> And so that was all really draining on me. And then on top of that, I have what I call a daytime body, which means at 10 p.m., my body shuts her down, right? And my other problem is after 10 a.m., I can't sleep. So after a 7 to 7 night shift, I'd go home, go to bed at 8 o'clock, wake up at 9 a.m., and I'd be like, oh, no. And I couldn't go back to sleep. So my health was really suffering. Now, if you know any firefighters, paramedics, you know most of us have side hustles, right? Because we only work, tw we work 12 hour shifts, we have lots of days off. So for my side hustle, I was doing corporate team building. I have my master's degree in management. I did, uh, I worked with Colorado Outward Bound when I lived in Leadville. So I was doing this ear ex experiential training and Ottawa was known as Silicon Valley North. Like, so it was like Silicon Valley here, but in Canada. And so we had all these high tech companies that were just doing team building training like crazy. So I was like, I was, I was onto something with this, uh, with my side hustle. 
Oh, and so I was doing that as a side hustle, and I was also training people to do adventure racing, which involves rappelling, okay? And one day, I was setting up a rappel for some clients, and I made a bit of a mistake, and I started to dive headfirst over the cliff. So at the last second, I jumped off the cliff, and I landed, and I broke my arm, and I broke my leg, and I broke my back. My dog was up top with me, and he ran down and woke me up, because I was unconscious, I don't know for how long. And uh, I was all alone. This is the cliff I fell off here, this exact cliff. And that's my, well, she was my girlfriend when I took the picture. She's my wife now. And so she was lazy and sleeping in the cabin when all this was happening. <laughs> and so broken arm, broken leg, broken back. I had to hike back to the cabin. It was only a quarter mile. But I had to hike back to the cabin and wake her up. And she called the ambulance. I had surgery later that day. And that got me to thinking. Like maybe this is the unit, like we were, talk, we were talking earlier with Christine about, uh, took her two years to make that life change. But for me, it just took a 35 foot <laughs> leap off a cliff, right? It's like, all right. <laughs> I, I'm not allowed to work for a couple months with the broken back and stuff. So I said, you know what? I'm just not going to go back to work as a paramedic and I'm going to go all in with my side hustle because there was so much upside to that, right? It was going to be huge. So I sold my house, I sold my cottage, and I bought this dump. This is <laughs> a 6,000 square foot abandoned sawmill on 164 acres. So my goal, my dream, was I was going to turn this uh, building into my house and into my business venue. The only thing that was sort of standing in my way, well, there's two things. One is I was a paramedic. I didn't know how to build anything. I don't know how, no construction, no carpeting, no electrical, no plumbing, no drywall. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. But, you know, my motto is if it can be done, it can be done by me. So if somebody else can do it, I'll, I'll figure it out, right? The other problem was, and I didn't know this when I bought the place. I had enough money to buy the place, but I thought I could get like a construction loan or a mortgage or something. And if there's any people that know anything about finance in this room, that's not how it works. Uh, like a construction loan starts with a blueprint. It doesn't start with a freaking shed. So I couldn't borrow any money. So all I could do was apply for credit cards. I had great credit. So people were giving me credit cards left and right. So yeah, 20% interest, I was able to uh, <laughs> string some shit together. <laughs> But then the early 2000s happened. I don't know if the same thing happened in the US as it did in Canada, but the high tech sector, what did it do? <whistles> so Nortel Communications was the biggest company in, Otto in Ottawa. It had, the, it had the most employees of anybody in Ottawa. It disappeared in two years. That was gonna be my primary client. I was gonna do most of my work for Nortel and they disappeared. So I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. So what are we gonna do about this? So I said, okay, look, what can I do with this, with this property that I've got? So we have lots of maple trees. We're in Canada and Quebec. So I'm like, I'm going to make maple syrup. So I started making Mad Trapper, Mad Trapper maple syrup. I started doing outdoor education for youth. That's the picture on the left. So we play a game called Man Tracker. I'd send the kids in the woods. I'd chase them around on my horse. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> It's scary when you see a horse galloping at you full speed down a trail. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Oh, the fear. Anyways, and then uh, I, got my, I got a church to ordain me, and uh, I turned our property into a wedding venue, a rustic wedding venue. That's me officiating a wedding in a minute. And then uh, the last photo is the Mad Trapper Trail and Snowshoe Series. I have the longest running trail and snowshoe series in all of Canada. So, so you know, I turned lemons into lemonade, and I was still doing a little bit of corporate team building work with the, with the, uh, with the government. So things are going okay. But at the same time, and I'm not in Erica's uh, level, but I was racing Ironman triathlon. So an Ironman triathlon is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a 26.2 mile run. So I, I was doing that, I did okay. Well, I, did, I wasn't doing that, I did one race and I did okay. And I was like, how can I do better? And it just so happened that I went to high school with one of Canada's top Ironman coaches, Steve Bentley. He's the guy in the picture in the middle with me. And so I, call, I, I, I messaged Steve, like, hey, I, I wanna do some, I wanna do better my next Ironman, what should I do? And he said, so I'll send you a training program, but what you really need to do is you need to work on your nu nutrition. So you guys know about nutrition, right? So you need to work on your nutrition. And he's like, I use a product called Isogenics and all my athletes use Isogenics. Who knows what isogenics is? If you have lupus, I hope you're using it. So, because um, one of my, anyway, we can talk later. But um, yeah, so he's like, yeah, you need to get on this isogenics. So that picture on the left, that's a six week uh, transformation that I made. So 
I made this amazing transformation in six weeks. I lost 40 pounds, gained muscle, and the people that were beating me in races, I was smoking them down, the 10K races and the shorter triathlons. So they all come up to me like, how did you do that? I'm like, I use this isogenics, and Steve says, you can buy it from me. Because I didn't know what multi-level marketing was. I did not know what network marketing was. I knew nothing about any of that stuff. I just, okay, here you go. And uh, before I knew it, I was recognized as a crystal executive with Isagenix. It's one of their <laughs> highest recognitions. I'm on stage getting this award. And um, I'm making like a thousand, two thousand dollars a month doing fuck all. <laughs> the money's just coming in. I was like, this is way better than all the side hustling I'm doing at, at the Ark. I want to do this for a living, which means I want to do nothing. I just want, you know, <laughs> people to buy my protein powder and send me money. So, but I, draw, I dried up my warm list. I'd beaten all the athletes I can beat, and, and that was that. So, I'm like, I need to figure out how to go to a cold audience. So, I went on the marketer's cruise. Who knows what the marketer's cruise? It's a cruise, a bunch of marketers go on it. <laughs> That's the definition. Anyway, so I'm on this cruise and we were stopped at Cozumel and I go out in the ocean off the beach and I'm playing on this bouncy castle and this guy comes up and we, we have a competition and it's Russell Brunson. And so Russell wasn't as famous then as he is now. He was just an up and coming then, but he, he was a, a year into click funnels. And uh, anyway, we hung out a little bit on the cruise. He's like, Mike, you need to get into my inner circle. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so I joined his inner circle. And uh, the first thing we do is we get a decade and a day call. So he's my coach and we, we meet for an hour and he's gonna tell me how to sell isogenics better. I'm like, yeah. But um, he's like, Mike, you are not passionate about selling protein powder. Where's Sean? Like, like my heart wasn't in. He knew that, right? He's like, but when you talk about living off the grid, you are just so pumped up and amped up about that. He's like, that's, that's where you're going to make your money is because that's where your passion is. And there's a business called Survival Life right now, and they are making millions of dollars a day selling something similar to what I know you can sell. So let's do that. I'm like, yeah, let's make millions of dollars a day. I could live with that. <laughs> so... In the inner circle, I have a coach to work with. His name, his name was Christian. So I built my funnel, like just like Russell taught me. I ran traffic to it, and I made no sales. I got no opt-ins. I got no leads. Like, okay. So I went to Christian. He's like, okay, let me help you with that. So Christian fixed it for me, ran more traffic to it, and I got no sales, no opt-ins, no leads. I'm like, okay. So I, I had Voxer access to Russell. I'm like, Russell, we need to start doing something here. He's like, okay. Don't tell anybody. I'm going to tell all you guys. He's like, don't tell anybody, but I'm going to build your funnel for you. Russell Brunson is going to build my funnel. I'm like, oh, here we go. So Russell built my funnel for me. I got no sales, no options, no leads. <laughs> so those of us in the know know that funnel hacking doesn't work. Like Russell's brilliant. I'm not knocking Russell, but what he, he doesn't do what he teaches. He teaches, he, he's a hopium dealer. He deals in hope, right? And that's what he sells. So anyway, but I was really, really good at driving traffic. So I have a video testimonial from Brunson where he says, my Facebook guy came into my office and said, Mike is better at driving Facebook ads than I am. That's what Russell's dude said, right? So Russell starts, um, how did I go backwards? Yeah, there we go. So Russell starts referring clients to me. So he referred this one boot camp gym client in Chino Hills, California. There was a small, two brothers owned it and they were working full-time jobs to support the gym, okay? Because they were losing money hand over fist. So the ad that they were running, they were funnel hacking, right? They were funnel hacking Orange Theory and LA Fitness and Gold's Gym. They were going after the 20-somethings, okay? That wanted the beach body. That's what they thought they could, that's what they were trying to do. So we were, they were running this ad with this hot chick on the left, right? But when I went into the gym, I didn't find her anywhere. I looked in the <laughs> I looked in the washroom, I looked in the parking lot. She was nowhere to be found. And in the gym, there was just all these like normal people like us. And when I met with them, I found out that they didn't want beach bodies. They just wanted to lose a couple of weights, a couple of pounds. They wanted to uh, improve their health. But what they really liked about this gym was the social, the, the, the family, the community that they had. Like this girl doing the, the ropes there, I, I got her crying on camera about how much she loved the gym and just the support that she had that she didn't have at home. And with the strength of that video, of what I got Kristen to say on the video, we were able to uh, turn a 36 to one return on ad spend, okay? And so within the year, the two brothers that were worried about losing the gym were able to quit their jobs and work the gym full time, okay? <laughs> And so, why? Why did my campaign work when the funnel hacking failed? It's because 
I took the time to understand the audience and craft a message and craft an offer that resonated with them, okay? My gym wasn't Orange Theory. My gym wasn't Gold's Gym. It was Agape Boot Camp Gym. It was a family gym. It was a community gym, right? And so that's the difference. Now, where does empathy come from? So it came a lot from working as a paramedic. As a paramedic, I wanted to save lives, but I also wanted to be more holistic in my approach to the, 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 the way I serve them, okay? And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about there. So I was working in Englewood, Colorado, and we got called, I was on the fire department there, and we got called to um, a, a nine-year-old girl who was on the counter uh, grinding venison with her father. She'd been doing it for three years, but the phone rang, dad turned to answer the phone. As he did that, she shoved her arm oh. into the meat grinder. So when I got there, she was on the, like we, we knocked on the door, there's, we just hear screaming. We go on the door, she's screaming, but the good news was she wasn't bleeding at all. Just the way the meat grinders grinds, it, didn't, there was, it wasn't cut, so all the arteries were like crushed together, so she wasn't bleeding, and she actually wasn't in a lot of pain. She was just like, ah, <laughs> I have a meat grinder coming out of my arm. And so, as a paramedic, by the book, what I'm supposed to do is determine the level of consciousness, get vital signs, uh, administer oxygen, start an IV, administer a bolus of uh, morphine, put them on a stretcher, take her to the hospital. That's what I was supposed to do, and I could do that in a, in a few minutes. But doing this call fast wasn't going to change what was going to happen to her arm. So what I did instead is we put a cup, we put a towel over the uh, we put a towel over the meat grinder. And I just started to talk to her. I was telling her dad jokes, because I had to start, I had to give her the morphine. I had to get an IV started. And imagine like this six foot two guy, all dressed in blue, coming at you with a freaking big needle, right? And she's nine years old. So I was able to start the IV without traumatizing her further. And by the time we got to the hospital, she was actually just telling me story after story about her dogs. And so what I did, there was, again, there was nothing I could do as a paramedic to make her arm situation any better or any worse, but I could help her with the emotional trauma, okay? And so that's part of that empathy, is understanding what your patient, what your audience needs more than they even know themselves. And so why do these stories matter to you? It's because of what I just said. Like, you need to understand your audience better than your audience understands themselves. And especially now, because it's all fake news, folks, right? <laughs> like, nobody trusts anybody anymore. Like, back in the day, we used to trust our leaders. We used to trust the media. We used to trust our friends. We used to trust our family. But now, everything we hear, we just quote Trump, like, fake news. We live in this huge clickbait click culture. When we're online scanning stuff, we just see one bullshit ad after another. Like this one on the right, when you see these, you already have cancer. Oh my God, like you gotta click on that. And you know on the other side of that click, there's, you're not gonna get what you're, what you're hoping to see. We can't even trust our friends anymore. So back to the isogenic story, one of the first women I enrolled in, my, uh, in isogenics was her name Sylvie, and she posts to social media like crazy, and I'm like, oh my God. And she's been using isogenics like me like close to 10 years, and I'm, every time I see her post, I'm like, man, isogenics is working for you, because she just looks so good, right? I'm 54 years old, and, just, and I look pretty good for my age, right? It's been the same with her. But then, this is honestly like three weeks ago, she's riding her bike on my road, and she stops at the house. I'm like, <laughs> You don't look like what I'm used to seeing because every time I see her on social media, she's applied all these filters. She actually looks her age in real life. <laughs> so isogenics isn't all that in a box of chocolates. It's the freaking filters that she's using. So we can't even trust what we see online anymore. I've got a buddy who does a, a podcast and he had Shaquille O'Neal on his podcast and he had a bunch of comments thinking that Shaq was AI generated and it was a complete fabrication. Like people didn't believe it was really Shaq. That, like that's how far we've come for not trusting. I've got another friend, Trish. Who knows who these two officers are in the picture? Only a couple people. Okay, so my friend Trish, we're in Canada, and she posts this thing about these two officers that are on this rampage in Georgia. They've killed 250 people in the line of duty. And my friend Trish, like, how is this going? Like, we're in Canada, so we think all Americans are crazy. <laughs> but but even, even regardless of how crazy and gut nuts you are, they shouldn't be, oopsie, they shouldn't be uh, killing 250 people in the line of duty. Well, these two officers are officers on Walking Dead. <laughs> And so, like, Trish didn't know that. She saw this post, she took it as real. So when my friends post things, I can't believe that either. So we don't, we can't believe anything. And so, where am I going with this? 
Well, it's empathy. It's understanding your audience. It's taking time to show that authenticity and getting to, getting to know them and them getting to know you. So I, uh, I had this as a video, but I, when I did my test, it didn't work as a video, so I did it as screenshots. So there's this really cool video of uh, the power of words. And the video sh starts with this, this blind guy sitting in a park, and he's got this sign, I am blind, uh, please help. Okay? And people are walking by him. So how many people in this room have sympathy for this guy, have compassion for this, for this blind guy? Because he's blind, right? He can't see anything. Okay, this is where, what Jim was talking about, okay? So you have sympathy for him, you have compassion for him, but how many people donate? People are walking by like, oh, that poor guy, right? And they just, they just keep going. And then this little girl comes along and she picks up her, his uh, sign, she flips it over and she writes something on the sign and then, and then she walks away. She puts it back down, she walks away. And next thing you know, all these people are coming by and they're just dropping money in the, in the can and hand over fist, hand over fist, dropping money. And then it goes to the next screen and you see what she wrote in the sign. And she wrote, it's a beautiful day and I can't see it. <laughs> right? So you guys, you can't relate to what it's like to be in blind, right? You, you don't know. If you haven't been blind, like, I don't know. I can guess what it's like to be Erica in a chair, but I don't know, right? But, like, if, if I saw Erica at the base of some steps and she couldn't get up, then I'm like, ah, oh, I, I get that, right? I get that one thing. And so this is what Jim was talking about at the beginning. This is the difference between sympathy and compassion and empathy, because you can put yourself in that person's position. Like, can you imagine walking through a park? Like, oh man, like, can you imagine being here right now, looking at this view? And can you imagine if you couldn't see it? Like that you can relate to, that is empathy, okay? So, how do we do it? Because I, I, told, I promised Steve we'd be like uh, left brain and we'd be you know, linear and we'd be methodical about it. Well, there's two levels of understanding that you have to have for your audience, okay? The first is an experiential understanding and the second is an emotional understanding. Now, on the experiential side, you've, oh, so if you guys are taking notes, that's cool, but I'm going to, at the end, I'm gonna give you these slides. I'll give you a link so you can, you can download all the slides, okay? Um, and I'm also, when Jim gives you the video, you'll also have access to this presentation if you want to see it again. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we've got problem awareness and level of sophistication. And when it comes to problem awareness, I'm going to give you a, a real life example of something that's happening to me in real time right now, okay? So, every morning, so this is my dog Biko. I, like I said, I have five rescue dogs. This is my latest rescue. His name's Biko, and he's freaking crazy. <laughs> And so to help with the craziness, we would go for a three to five K run, trail run on, in my backyard every morning. And so I track all my numbers on Strava and uh, usually my, my times go down. By a few seconds, they stay the same. But like six, eight weeks ago, I was noticing my times were getting slower, slower and slower and slower. And some of the hills that I used to run up, I was having to walk up. I'm like, oh man, I, I'm slowing down. And so I was like, oh, okay, I've, I've got these, I'm not running as fast. That's all I knew is I wasn't running as fast. I'm like, I won't, I'll stop running every day and I'll only run every second day. So I started running every second day and my times didn't improve at all. So this is when, so I was unaware when my, uh, when I just knew my times were slow. That's all I knew is slower times, but I didn't know I had a problem. And then when I, 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 I ran less and my times didn't improve, like I've got a problem because then I was realizing that I'm also waking up in the morning tired and I'm also like having trouble focusing in the afternoon. I'm nodding off before I go to bed. So I'm like, I've got a problem. I've got fatigue, right? So I was like, okay, so I drink a, a lot of alcohol. And so I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm gonna drink less alcohol. So and by a lot, I mean like, like half a bottle of wine a night. And so I'm like, I'll stop drinking the wine, I'll, I'll work on my diet a little bit better, and, and the problems will go away. Okay, so now, uh, so that was how I was gonna deal with the problem. But that didn't help. So I'm like, okay, I need external help. So who could help me with fatigue? My family doctor could, a naturopathic doctor could. I wasn't sleeping, I knew I wasn't sleeping as well as I should, so maybe there's some sort of sleep therapist, maybe a hypnotherapist could help me. Um, there's, there's a few different ways, right? So now I'm at the solution aware phase, but what solution should I take? And I decided I was gonna go with a naturopathic doctor, okay? So I'm like, okay, naturopath, I can get like better supplements and different things like that, and, and she'll help me out. And then. Researching naturopaths, I found that there are naturopaths that specialize in fatigue. 
So now I'm most aware. So imagine I'm at the most aware stage, I've done my research, I know I need a naturopathic doctor, and I see an ad in Facebook for a new clinic that's opening, and they have a 50% off introductory session. Would I jump on that? In a second, right? Because I'm at the most aware stage looking for that solution. But what if I was still at the unaware stage where my race time, where my run times were slower and, my, and you know, I just knew I had a problem? If I saw that 50% off, would that work for me then? No, it wouldn't, right? And so that's what you have to think about when you're advertising is speak to your audience where they are. So you can still advertise at the unaware stage and the problem aware stage, but that's where you have to introduce the problem and, and educate them. Hey, are you in your 50s and you wake up tired every morning? And you know, when you run with your dog on the trails, you slow down. <laughs> Can't be that specific, but you know what I'm talking about along those, <laughs> along those lines, right? You start, you, you identify the problems that they're having and you're like, I know you have those problems and here's how we might help. So you have to start at a lower level. That's problem awareness. Level of sophistication, that is uh, what sort of offers they've seen, uh, they're seeing now, because the more they've seen, the, the more offers they've seen, the more comprehensive your offers need to be. And I, I'll dive more into this in a, in a minute. And then after experiential understanding, you need to have an emotional understanding. And I've broken that down to what I call the four D's of transformation delivery. Okay, so in the short term, you have your short term difficulties and your short term desires. And then in the long term, you have your short term dreads and your short term dreams. But how do you know what those problems and solutions are? Because they're not telling anybody, right? Like we don't tell our families, we don't tell our friends. See what I did there with friends? <laughs> <laughs> Huh? <laughs> we're not honest with our priests, we're not honest with our therapists, but who are we honest with? There's one thing we are honest with, and that is our diary, right? When we write in our diary, we're bare bones, we're completely raw, and um, yeah. So what would it mean to you if you could take a peek into one of your potential buyer's uh, diaries? Would that be valuable to you? Okay, very cool. So. Let's say we have this woman, her name's uh, Sarah, and she's just having a lot of trouble with stress. We're gonna read her diary, and then I'm gonna show you how you can create a diary just, and I'm gonna actually give you the tool to build this very diary for yourself. So imagine you're a practitioner of some sort that can help somebody with stress. So she writes, Dear Diary, I can't help but feel as if I'm caught in an unending loop of stress, just ping-ponging between work and what little there is left of my personal life. Today was an absolute nightmare. A project deadline got moved up and suddenly everyone at work lost their minds. As usual, it's on me to smooth things out and make the impossible happen. God, I am so tired. Honestly, I've reached a point where I'm overwhelmed, but I can't show it. Not at work, not in front of my family, not even in front of my friends. Remember what I said about not being honest with your, with your family and friends? I can feel the weight of it all crushing my chest, but it's like I've built this image of myself. This ambitious go-getter, this resilient woman who can handle anything life throws, at, throws her way. But what a load of crap that is. Inside of a mess, and sometimes it's so loud in my head I can hardly think straight. There's a sinking feeling that this is it. This is my life now. My biggest, deepest fear is that I'm stuck in this whirlpool of stress forever. Is that what life is? Just stress, work, and then more stress. What if I burn out and it ruins not just my career, but my health and my relationships too? I t try to keep up the appearances. I really do. I scroll through the wellness blogs as if, I'm, as if reading an article about 10 ways to beat stress will magically make everything better. I hear my friends talk about their own stress and the wellness products they're trying, but can't bring myself to share how deep this goes for me. I've tried those meditation apps, but they just don't work. I sit there trying to clear my mind, but instead I go through the to-do list, the replaying of the, the day's mistakes. I can almost hear the clock ticking, each tick echoing the time I'm wasting. I don't want to just exist, I want to live. I crave that work-life balance where my job is just a part of who I am, not the sum total. I want the kind of inner peace that lets me enjoy a spontaneous weekend getaway without worrying about Monday. I want to live a balanced life, one where I have the time and mental space for my family, my job, and myself. A life where I can pursue hobbies like hiking and cooking, things that genuinely make me happy. But how can I focus on cooking a new recipe or comp completing a hike when my mind is a spiraling vortex of stress and anxiety? There's a curious but frustrated part of me that still holds out hope. Maybe there is a solution out there that I just haven't found yet. Perhaps there's a way to break the cycle and actually live the life I daydream about, the life I deserve. I'm health conscious. I value my well-being. Why shouldn't I desire a stress-free life? Why should that be a luxury? 
Secretly, I yearn for a confidence that stems from within, unshakable by external circumstances. I want to achieve my career and life goals without the constant mental tumult. I want to wake up feeling refreshed, go through the day with focus, and go to bed at peace. Isn't it ironic? I value integrity, yet I feel like a fraud because I can't align this stressful reality with the hopeful, ambitious persona I've create, curated. Something has to change. I can't go on like this, keeping, keeping my struggles and my fears penned up inside me. Sometimes I feel like shouting out, I need to find a way to manage this stress, and I need it now. But then what? Will shouting make it go away? Ah, of course not. But maybe, just maybe, if I break the cycle of silence, something will change. Maybe if I confront, confront the elephant in the room, I can finally start living the life I've been dreaming of. A life where stress doesn't govern my emotions and actions. Maybe then I'll find my peace. So if you could read that about your audience, do you think you could create a stronger marketing campaign? Definitely, right? Do you feel like you really know this person? Because what's cool is if you're a stress practitioner, most of you are just going to focus on like the, the surface level stuff, right? When, in your marketing. But with this diary, you can like, oh my gosh, like this emotional isolation. I never thought about that, right? Sarah feels she has to keep up a strong facade to the entire world, right? She has this inauthenticity and self-doubt. You can speak to that in your messaging. She has this fear of future consequences of it, not just hurting her today, but you know, her health and her family and her relationships in the future. So this is all stuff that you can get by reading this diary. This diary is the most powerful thing I have ever found or used in my marketing. Before I'd have to go into the Facebook groups and read you know, uh, the uh, Amazon book reviews and different things, but this is something raw and real and super cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So I've created a series of prompts in chat GPT which will allow you to create a diary with just a couple of inserts of your own for whatever and we're not going to get into the weeds about uh, Eugene Schwartz and breakthrough advertising, the levels of uh, problem awareness, but you can build a diary entry from uh, an, an unaware audience, problem aware, solution aware, all the way to most aware, okay? So I'm going to give you the props of this at the end of the presentation because I'll give it to you now. You're all going to be playing with chat. And you're not going to be listening to me, but I promise I'm going to give it to you, okay? So the second most important thing is to stand out. We've all heard different is better than better. Why should somebody hire you than your co over your competition, right? And in the middle of that level of sophistication, you can see that you need to uh, insert a big differentiator. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about here is you need to have that big differentiator. And there's two types you can apply. The one I call your unsung advantage, okay? And that is a, a property or something that you possess that your um, competition has as well, but they're not talking about it, you're not talking about it, and nobody's talking about it. So if you're the first to talk about it, then you can own it, okay? The second is the signature edge, and that is something unique and proprietary to you that nobody else has. So I'm gonna give you examples of all of that. So one of the best examples, and Steve, you've probably seen the, the Hopkins uh, beer ad. Okay, so 80 years ago, uh, Schlitz Brewery was number 16 in the ranking of uh, breweries in, in uh, the United States. They're like, we gotta get out of this hole, right? So they hire Claude Hopkins, and Claude comes in, and he does a, he's this monster copywriter. So he comes in, and he's touring their, uh, their facility, and he's seeing all this work they're doing to make sure the beer is pure. These, these glass, steel enamel, uh, tanks and they filter the air that's coming in the, bure the, the room and they're using the, they're, they're pasteurizing everything like 16 times. He's like, oh my gosh, why aren't you guys talking about how pure this system is? And the brewmaster's like, because that's how you brew beer, dude. Like, <laughs> like, if you don't brew this way, you're going to get shitty beer. Like, everybody does it this way. But the thing is, is nobody was talking about it, okay? So, Claude wrote these amazing ads where this one ad, he made it sound like your doctor is recommending you drink beer because it's so healthy. <laughs> but all he did was he, he took the ownership of the purity of the beer and legend goes uh, Schlitz went from number 16 in the market and depending on the article either to number 6 or number 2. Okay. Another example, and this one happened with me, um, so I'm always in Facebook, I'm always getting hit with fitness ads and nutrition ads and different stuff and <clears throat> for a while I was seeing this ads from this uh, Fabian <coughs> Anybody know CPR? <laughs> <coughs> I can teach it. I can teach it. Okay. Yes. I don't know what that is, but it's not good. If it was my house, it would be a mosquito that flew down my throat. Sorry about that. Ah, hopefully that did it. Anyway, yeah, so I'm seeing all these ads for um, all these testimonials for Fabian and, and Basement Beast. But here's the thing. Is testimonials in the fitness space, do they work on the front end? 
They don't because of the level of sophistication. Every fitness program works. Every diet works, right? It's worked for somebody, just, you just don't think it'll work for you. So I'm ignoring all these ads from Fabian, all these testimonials, like whatever, whatever, dude, I'm sure it works for somebody, but like, I'm an ectomorph and you're a mesomorph, so it won't work for me. But then I see this ad from Fabian where he says, get in shape like a kangaroo. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I haven't heard that one before. So I click on the ad and I, I get taken to a video sales letter and he starts talking about density stacking. And with density stacking, that's a way to train where you use less weight in less time with less uh, risk of injury and with quicker results. I'm like, huh? Let's do that. So he sold me on the density stacking. But the thing is, is the density stacking, that's just a way of training that hundreds of trainers do. They, most of them do the same sort of thing, but they haven't, they haven't, well he, it's called density stacking. They just haven't spoken about it. So he got me with this unsung advantage that most trainers do. And I signed up for Basement Beast over a year ago. I've been doing it three days a week, uh, or four days a week ever since, and it's a great program. Now I'm so embarrassed to show this slide with my truck. <laughs> <sighs> Thanks to you. I'm tall! Come on! I have a small penis, but I'm tall! <laughs> anyway, so I, I embarrassingly, I bought the truck for my wife because she has horses and we have to take the horse to the show, okay? It's not because I'm insecure very much. <laughs> so anyways. But I drive a, I drive a Ram uh, Bighorn. And so if people in the truck world are like, oh, that thing got a Hemi? Like that's the thing, right? It's got a Hemi engine. A Hemi engine means that the cylinder is shaped in such a way that it's got a hemispherical head, which means it has more surface area, which means you get more horsepower, more torque with better fuel efficiency. So if you want to drive a truck that has better horsepower, better torque, or better fuel efficiency, what do you got to drive? You got to have a Hemi. It's got to have the Hemi. Ford says that's bullshit because we've got an EcoBoost. With the EcoBoost engine, that truck just clicks along using four cylinders when you're driving around the city, it's all good to go, right? But when you need to haul that horse trailer, the turbo kicks in and you got more power than you ever need, okay? And so with Ram, they're the only ones with a Hemi. Ford doesn't have it, Toyota doesn't have it, Chevy doesn't have it. Ford, they've got the EcoBoost. Ram doesn't have it, Toyota doesn't have it. So they each got their, their unique thing and they, they hang their hat on the power of the Hemi or the power of the EcoBoost, okay? Another great example is the Dyson uh, vacuum cleaner. They have cyclone technology. <laughs> They're the only ones with cyclone technology and that's what this whole ad is about. It shows you how the cyclone works, how the air goes through and the, and the, and the, the debris gets pushed to the side or maybe the other way around. No, yeah, the air goes to the side, debris goes through the bottom. And so because they have cyclone technology, how much more does a Dyson vacuum cost than a Hoover? Lots, Lots more, right? Is Dyson better than a Hoover? I don't know, but they've got cyclone technology and they're like, yeah, it's, it's worth more, okay? So if you have a big differentiator, you can charge more. So for me, uh, my big differentiator is empathic marketing, okay? And so you could argue that uh, empathic marketing, is it an unsung advantage or is it a signature edge? Because if you're a marketer, do you think you take time to understand your audience? You better, right? Everybody does, but I've said it's, I call it empathic marketing. So it may be something that everybody does, but I'm just making a bigger point about it. Or it could be a signature edge because I also tie in my story, my background as a paramedic, because that's a big part of it, right? And no other marketer has been a helicopter paramedic. I'm the only one in the world. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. And I also have like my proprietary five steps for implying, applying an empathic marketing strategy. But the point is, is it doesn't matter if, you don't have to label it as an unsung advantage or a signature edge. You just have to have one, right? So if you have one, you're gonna, you're gonna stand up from the crowd and uh, your business is gonna be better, okay? So in the last few weeks, this woman's been hitting me up. She wants me to um, sell her program here. Three keys to cultivating balance and harmony in your everyday life. How many people in this room, providers in the room, could provide that for your audience? Okay, there's a bunch of people. So you know what that means if a bunch of people can do it? This is a commodity, okay? If everybody can do it, then who, oh, could I go into YouTube and type in how can I have better harmony and balance? Do you think I'd find any videos? Oh my gosh, there's so many, right? And so she's got a free 75 minute webinar. Is it free? Doesn't cost any money, but is it gonna cost 75 minutes of my time? And how does a webinar work? 30 minutes of bullshit, 50 minutes, 15 minutes of content, 30 minutes of a sales pitch. 
Okay? So should I do that? Or should I just go to YouTube and get the answer? Just go to YouTube and get the answer, right? But what if, instead of this three keys to cultivating balance and harmony in your everyday life, she had uh, stop stress from stealing your joy. That's the benefit that you're going to get. It's, it's tangible. And she's going to do it with her NeuroSync hypnotherapy that's going to realign your mind in just one webinar. Okay? So if you buy into a NeuroSync web, uh, hypnotherapy, you've, have you ever heard of it? No, because I made it up. Terms, no, because no, I made it up. <laughs> I made it up. It's my own thing. Which means if you want to have, uh, if you want to stop stress from stealing your joy, then you need NeuroSync technology or hypnotherapy. And where can you get that? Only from me. Only one place, right? So it's not a commodity anymore. And I've also made a promise that I'm going to realign your mind in just one webinar. Okay, you're going to get results in one webinar. If you go to YouTube, are you going to get results right away from a video? No, right? So again, I could sell her same thing, but she just needs to change the headline. And that neurosync, and I made that up, like seven. It's just something made up. But that's the power. And that, that's what Dyson did, right? They, we got cyclone technology. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody else does. There's hollow sync out there. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Just so, you know. just so we know. Hollow sync, H A L O sync. Very cool. <laughs> And so, but NeuroSync, HowlSync, it's, it's, it's like emp empathic marketing, right? I could call it Mike Caldwell marketing. Is that as powerful as empathic marketing? They're both big differentiators. Like, I could be the only person that has Mike Caldwell marketing, or I could be the only person that has empathic marketing. Empathic resonates with you on a level. You're like, oh, empathy, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the second takeaway is you have to have a big differentiator, and you understand that now, but how are you going to do it? I've got some chat GPT prompts for that, okay? So same thing, I'm going to give you the prompts to that at the end of the session because I don't want you getting distracted. Okay, so the third most important step, and this is, I sometimes say it's the most important step, but it's, it's tough because what is the most, uh, what's the, how strong is a chain, right? We all know it's only as strong as its weakest link. So every part of your marketing campaign is arguably the most important part. But your, your offer is super important, okay? And what a lot of business uh, owners make the mistake of, they think their product or their service is their offer, but it's not, okay? Because if you want to have an irresistible offer, your product is only a portion of that. So the building blocks you need are, one, you need the product, uh, you have to have bonuses, and I've, most of you guys that made offers at the end of the day, you all had bonuses, uh, risk reversal, social proof, payment terms, scarcity, and urgency. So, the core of your offer is obviously your product, okay? And so this, so I have a product, it's called a 30 minute gap analysis, where you and I will hop on a call and in 30 minutes I'll help you understand what you need to do to get from where you are to where you want to be with, uh, by improving your marketing, okay? And so my headline is, your marketing issues, marketing issues solved in half an hour or I put money in your pocket, okay? So did I talk about the gap? I'm, uh, beneath this video here, you, you learn it's the gap analysis thing that I'm making, but the headline is all about you and the benefit you're going to get, okay? So your product has to focus on the benefit first. So I'm going to solve your marketing issues and we'll get to the money in your pocket in a second. But then you have to have social proof. And there's usually three reasons why people won't buy from you. First, they don't believe in you. Second, they don't believe in your product. And third, this is the biggest one for most people. They don't believe in themselves. Like I say, every diet works. I don't care what it is. If I wanted to lose weight, though, I know Weight Watchers, which I know works, but Weight Watchers will not work for me because I cannot, I'm not organized enough to count points or whatever. Like, that's not a system that would work for me, but I, I believe it works, okay? So if you have testimonials, see, that's what I was saying with the Basement Beast, is they have testimonials that proved it worked, and I believed it does work. I just didn't think it would work for me. So I've got some realtors in the back. And so I want you to look at this. So I've got a realtor client, a uh, realtor coach client, okay? And so if you're a realtor coach, um, you could, uh, realtors could say, oh, I believe uh, this system works, but it won't work for me. So I've got six different testimonials with six different headlines, okay? So headline number one is the experienced, the experienced realtor in a slump or that's struck a financial ceiling. Okay, so like, okay, that's great. I'm an experienced realtor and I'm in a slump. Realtor number two is a brand new realtor who's struggling to make his first sale. Okay, that's a different uh, realtor avatar together. Then we've got the successful realtor uh, with no time to play or spend, uh, spend with his family. Then we've got the defeated realtor and we all know those guys. They've just been working like crazy. They're like, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm just gonna hang it up. Then we've got the troubled realtor who uh, wants to work with more ethics and integrity. And finally, we've got the driven realtor who simply wants to make a million bucks. That's all he cares about. 
Okay? So you see how I have six different testimonials, each addressing a different false limiting belief for why uh, this program won't work for me. Because, uh, did you think I missed any? Some, right? yeah. That's most of them, right? Yeah. There might be one or two more that if I really looked into it, but yeah, most realtors will identify with one of these testimonials, okay? So think about that when you're getting your testimonials and who you're trying to attract and what their false limiting beliefs are. The, second, uh, the next thing is risk reversal. Make it super easy to say yes. I think Sean was saying, I'm gonna make this so easy to say yes, right? Because um, your audience has, has fear, right? That they're gonna lose something, either their money or their time, their status or control. So with my 30 minute uh, gap analysis call, I have a double-double guarantee, okay? And I'm in Canada, so we know what, Canadians know what a double-double is. I don't think you call it that here, but it's two creams, two sugars in your coffee. It's a burger here. Oh, it's a, it's a burger here, yeah. okay, at Tim Hortons, <laughs> right. So anyway, the first, so when you're doing stuff, you want to look at your audience's false limiting beliefs. And the first false limiting belief is, I don't know what I'm talking about. And you're not going to provide me the, you're not going to be able to deliver on your promise. So you know what? If I don't deliver on my promise, if I don't give you a clear path to get from where you are to where you're going to be with your marketing, I'm not going to refund you. I'm going to double refund you. So it's a $97 call. I'll give you 200 bucks. I'll give you $200 if I don't deliver on that promise. The second false limiting belief, who wants to get on a strategy call with somebody? Nobody. Why? Sales pitch, right? So you know what? For you, if I try to sell you anything in that 30 minutes, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna refund your money. I'm gonna give you double your money back. So if I try to pitch you in that 30 minutes, I'm gonna give you $200. So worst case scenario is that you're gonna double your money. Does that sound like a good offer? It does, right? Because I've taken away your false limiting beliefs. Now that's an unconditional term. Like if I don't deliver, I give you your money back. But for those of you guys that are selling uh, you know, bigger ticket items, you don't want to give their money back. Because like you said, like, you, you believe in your program, it will work, but if I don't do it, will it still work? <laughs> no, right? And so if I'm in your program for three months and after three months I'm like, I still don't have any confidence, you suck. And you're like, did you come to any of my training calls? Did you do any of my exercises? Well, no, but I paid the money so I should have gotten the results. Well, that's not true. And so you can have a conditional guarantee. And so my conditional guarantee on one of my coaching things is that if you attend 50% of the trainings and you build the funnel like I instruct you to and you run the ads like I instruct you to and you don't make a single sale, then I'll give you your refund. Another thing I could do is instead of giving the refund, because now they've still, they've still lost that time, right? And so how about instead of giving your money back, I will work with you one-on-one -on -one until you double what you paid for my coaching. So that would be another way that you can offer, make a conditional offer. This is just all taken away, like their false limiting beliefs and the reasons why they shouldn't uh, work with you. And then bonuses, like I say, most of you guys uh, uh, made an offer, have had bonuses, right? So the bonuses should complement and enhance your main product. They should be of equal or greater value. Uh, they need to be immediately available and it needs to be simple, okay? Because I have, ha I have bought products that I didn't want the product. I wanted one of the bonuses. The bonus was better. Has anybody ever done that? Right, so you gotta have those bonuses. So for my bonuses, um, you get a, a digital download of my Empathic Marketing book immediately. You pay your money, you get the book, right? Um, I, you also get my EMS scorecard, which is the most cutting edge online. It's, not, it's kind of a checklist, but it's a qualitative checklist. It's, it's just, it's a very valuable tool. Anyway, so those are the two bonuses you get with that offer. Um, the next thing is, again, if you have a higher ticket, and this is super important, I can't believe how many businesses do this wrong. So, if you've got a higher priced offer and you're gonna make, you wanna have payment terms, okay? So they can, they can make them. So this is the way you need to do it. So if you've got a three month coaching, you can say, okay, I got a three months coaching call, it's $600 a month, or you can save $300 by paying $1,500 today. So what have I just done for you? I've given you the opportunity to save $300. But what are the way, what's the way most businesses do it? They're like, we've got this three months coaching, it's $1,500, but if you're too cheap or you're too poor to afford that, then I'll happily gouge you and I'll charge you $300 a month for, or $600 a month for three months, right? I went a bit extreme on my language there, but you see what I'm saying? Like in the first way, I'm gonna save you $300 and the second way, I'm gonna charge you $300 more, okay? And it's the exact same offer, it's just in the way you word it. So make sure it's always worded in the positive. And then there's scarcity and urgency. Scarcity and urgency just work. So with that um, realtor client, okay. With that uh, 10 minute, uh, don't do that to me. 
with that realtor client, we had, uh, you've totally threw me off track. With that realtor client, we have a three day online event. And with that three day online event, it's $497, but I have a super early bird special, an early bird. And so we have scarcity all the way up. So it's $97 and 197 and then 297, 497. Okay, and so the way that works is that we get sales every time, right before that timer hits zero. Exactly. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you, because if you don't do that, if you only have the one countdown timer that goes to the end, when are you going to make the sales? Not until, not until January, right? And the thing is, is the people who wanted to buy in October, they're like, oh, I'll just buy in January. They won't, right? So having this scarcity and urgency is super valuable. So putting all this together, you've got uh, your core, and so you got your core product and your bonuses, but focus on the benefits and not the features. Don't uh, focus on what you're providing, focus on how they're gonna benefit from it. You're gonna reverse the risk with your guarantee, you're gonna have social proof that identifies the don't believe in you, don't believe in uh, the product, don't believe in themselves, payment terms, scarcity, and urgency. So again, how do you put all this together? I don't know, I wish there was an AI tool that could help me do that. <laughs> There is. So again, I've created a bunch of prompts within ChatGPT where you put in a bunch of stuff about your avatar and uh, it's easy because chat does most of the work and it will help you come up with, a, with an offer. Okay, so quick recap with what you need to do to 2x or 4x your business. First, get a glimpse into your, di uh, your avatar's diary. That's gonna give you that deep emotional understanding. You're gonna be able to tailor content properly. You're gonna anticipate their needs and create offers for those needs. You're gonna be able to refine your marketing and sales strategies and you're gonna foster authentic uh, connections. Your big differentiator, love the big diff, that's my favorite thing, is you, it's gonna allow you to stand out in a crowded market command higher prices, build stronger customer loyalty. It's gonna simplify your marketing efforts and it's gonna help you attract ideal customers. And then your ideal uh, irresistible offer, it's gonna boost conversion rates, increase average order value, establish trust and credibility. It, it encourages word of mouth marketing. So I go on a bunch of podcasts and when I tell my podcast hosts that I will give you double your money back, they're like, whoa, I've never heard of that before. And they like to tell their friends and family, well, not family so much, but the people that know that could benefit that, listen, this guy, he, he believes in his stuff. And, and because he believes in it so much, I believe it'll help you too. And he backs it up with, with his own money. So do you think I delivered on my promise to 2X or 4X? Hands up, yes. I honestly believe if you implement one of the three things, you can double. Like each one of these things is super powerful. That avatar, oh my gosh. Like if you know how to use it, your, your marketing message will be so much stronger. Your big differentiator, now you're suddenly Dyson, right? Your offer, like I say, offer, the wrong offer usually tanks most deals, okay? So here's my uh, QR code for uh, accessing your assets. Or if you're old school like me, you can go to www.themarketingmedic.ca backslash penthouse dash mastermind. And it's an opt-in. And when you get uh, past the opt-in, you'll have access to this bunch of orange buttons where you can download the chat GPT prompts. But <coughs> guess what? There's bonuses, <laughs> bonuses, bonuses, bonuses. So first bonus is that you'll be able to download this uh, presentation slide deck. It's there now. Um, and second, once I have the video from Jim, I'll put this presentation up there. <coughs> and then I'm also offering my 30 minute gap analysis, but instead of 30 minutes, I've expanded it to 45 minutes. And instead of $97, it's $47. Just use coupon code LUTES. <laughs> That's spelled with two O's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to give up the 50 bucks. Yeah, and, and the, so the, the guarantees stand, right? If I don't deliver, I'll give you, ha, huh, I only have to give you guys $100 back, not $200 back. And if I try to sell you anything during that 45 minutes, same thing, I will give you uh, twice your money back. So it's not, a, it's not a pitch session. I got a really awesome video from uh, the last guy I, I uh, did it with as a, a vocal coach and he just, he was just gushed because he said he got more value before the, I sent him some stuff, before the call, he said he got more value before the call the, than, than he expected to get on the call. So I think Jim spoke about this, knowledge doesn't get your results, right? It's the action that gets it. Oh, and with that, uh, that, that 45 minute call, <coughs> I'm primarily a message guy and so we're gonna go over what your overall message is, and then how you're integrating that into your, your website and your funnel. And if you've got ads running, I'll also look at your ads. So wherever 
And I've got a spreadsheet where we can actually plug your numbers into the spreadsheets to see where your, your weak link is. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a left brain guy like Steve. Like, it's got to be, yeah, i got to see the numbers to know what's wrong. But anyway, back to the uh, knowledge doesn't get results, action does. So what I try to do today is I try to educate you into the importance of your um, understanding your audience, having a big differentiator, and uh, crafting an irresistible offer. But I th I'm hoping that by giving you the tools, you will actually do it and make it happen. Because it's really easy with, chat, with, with the tools I've given with ChatGPT. Because like for those of us who've worked with this guy called Todd Brown, he's really up here. And it's, it's really hard to understand how to implement what he said. But now that I've just broken it down with chat, it, we can do, I, I showed it to Todd. He's like, whoa. <laughs> he thought it was pretty cool. And here's the thing, we, I think Jim also talked about, he hasn't said much today, but what he said is spoken volumes. Is that, like I said I would 2x or 4x your, uh, your revenue, and it's not all about that, but the more money you make, what does that mean? That means you've helped more people. Like the money is, in, in some ways, it's just, it's just how, we, how, we, how we keep score, right? And so the more money you make, so don't fear that, because that's a good thing, because that means you're out helping more people. And you're going to do that by first understanding them, understanding their problems, and then providing them the actual solution that they need. And that comes from your empathy. And then once you have all that, you're going to provide genuine value. So uh, that's it. That's all. I'll be here all weekend. And uh, yeah, I also live off the grid with five dogs and stuff, and you might want to ask me questions about that. But anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for your attention. All right, guys, we're going to uh, use...